What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Sports Muse podcast. This episode is brought to you by Raise Energy, like always. Um, they're kind enough to sponsor the show. Um, if you want to buy some of the best tasting energy drinks on the market, guaranteed, um, I, I like it just as much as I like Bang. I like it more than Rain or anything like that. Um, definitely check it out. My promo code is in the description to this video. So definitely try to give it a try. But the reason we're here today is to talk about the 2021 NFL draft. Uh, I am going through the AFC North and talking about who I thought won this year's draft, who I think lost this year's draft, and you know what I kind of think about each of the team's selections in this year's draft. Okay, so I'm going to start off with what team I think won. And when, you know, I'm a Steelers fan. So when I look at this, um, I, pay, I, I pay close attention to the AFC North. And, uh, you know, every year that a team has a good draft or a bad draft, um, it really catches my eye. And the team that really jumped out to me was the Cleveland Browns. Um, absolutely loved their two, first two picks. Uh, when they got Greg Newsom the second, he's a guy who started to come up the board late in the draft process. He is a physical corner, um, great athleticism. He can make a play on the ball. I really, really like him. And I think he really helps out that Cleveland Browns secondary, which that was kind of their, their weak point. I think they, they were looking for a playmaker besides like a Denzel Ward. And I think Greg Newsom, the second will do great starting opposite of Denzel Ward. And then they also needed somebody in the middle of the field that could really just, you know, be a difference maker. And in the second round, I thought there was no way possible he would fall this far. And that is Jeremiah Awosu Kumora, um, huge fan, you know, game changing speed. You know, of course, when you look at those small backers, there's always like the idea of they they can't get off blocks and, and whatnot. Um, but this guy shows some instinct, you know, yeah, he'll have to develop a little bit. Um, but I definitely think he's a guy who, you know, might not be day one ready, but he, it won't take him too long to get ready. And he's really going to make a huge difference, uh, especially with that pass rush. You know, ball's going to be coming out quick uh, with Clowney and Garrett coming off the edge. I really like what Cleveland did. They shored up that that defense. That was, you know, they're their weaker point. They get Baker another weapon with Anthony Schwartz, um, the, the speedster from Auburn. They shore up the offensive line. James Hudson, you know, I think overall, I think they won the draft uh, in the AFC North, and I think they were one of the better teams overall in this year's draft. Now, let me jump to what team I think lost this year's draft in the AFC North. And uh, I'm sure people will disagree, but I'm going to say the Cincinnati Bengals. And I I'm solely basing this off of you have your franchise quarterback. You have your guy that is selling the tickets, um, the guy who could potentially take you to a Super Bowl eventually, and Joe Burrow, and you just saw he blew out his knee last year because he didn't have protection. He got hammered all year last year. And what do you do with your first pick at fifth overall? You take a receiver. Great. It's Bur he, I love Jamar Chase. I think he's excellent. And it's this me saying that they're a loser has nothing to do with Jamar Chase. It has to do with they not taking like, you know, Pene Sewell um, or trading back and trying to get extra picks, you know, to, to sh really sure up that offensive line. Um, you know, yeah, Chase wouldn't have been there if you would have traded back. But I just think the biggest need was offensive line and they didn't really do much to solve that problem. So they, they get, you know, uh, Burrow, a great playmaker. The second round, they get uh, Jackson Carmen, who I thought was a little bit of a reach at that point. Um, he's not bad at all. Don't get me wrong but it's probably like a little bit of a reach in the second round. It's probably a third round talent. And then you go to the third round, third and fourth round. I actually do like their picks. Um, they get two edge rushers. They get um, a side from Texas and they get sample from Tulane, two guys who can really get after the quarterback. So I do like those picks, but I I'm honestly just basing this off of they really should have done a better job of shoring up that offensive line instead of going rounds one and five to help that offensive line and help Jer Joe Burrow out. We jump to the Baltimore Ravens, love their first round. I mean, they have two first round selections, but their first one, Rashad Bateman, uh, was one of my favorite wide receiver prospects um, in, in this year's draft. I actually kind of like him more than Jalen Waddle. Um, he's not the same type of player, but he tested more athletically than I thought he would. I think he's a sharp route runner, and I think he's the kind of guy that can really do wonders for Lamar Jackson. Um, he kind of reminds me of like a, an upgraded athlete of like a Derek Mason, uh, where he's kind of a technician, but you know, like I said, he's a better athlete than I thought he was. Um, with their second pick, they get a, a little bit of a project guy uh, with Jason away. Um, crazy speed, right? You know, he was a, I think a four, three, six, I believe coming off the edge. 
didn't really put up the production, obviously. Um, so he's a guy where if Baltimore can work with him and have him figure out, you know, some pass rush moves, a counter move, uh, this guy is going to be deadly. Uh, he has all the tools physically. It's just now it's fine tuning those pass rushing skills. Uh, I think Baltimore taking him in the first round. They must see something. They think they can coach him up. Now that's to be seen. Third round, they grab the guard from Georgia, Ben Cleveland. Um, I thought he's a really solid pick. You know, he's not Marshall Yonda. Um, he's more of a, a kind of a grinder, um, a big guy, a bully. Um, so I, I do like that pick. I think that fits in with Cleveland's run first offense. I also look at Brandon Stevens from uh, SMU. Um, he's a guy who can really make a play on the ball. And uh, I feel like Baltimore just has this litany of DBs, and uh, he's definitely going to add to that core. Last team I want to talk about is the Pittsburgh Steelers. With the first-round selection, they take Najee Harris. Um, I really, really like Najee Harris, and I think you know Pittsburgh needed a running back in the worst kind of way. I'm not a huge fan of taking a running back in the first round. Um, you know, obviously with Jacksonville taking ETN in the first round, maybe they would take Naj Najee if he was there. Um, but, you know, I'd have been fine trading back in the second round and getting like a Javante Williams. But, you know, listen, Kevin Colbert, a little smarter than me. Now the Steelers second round pick, tight end from Penn State, Pat Fryermuth. Um, that one's kind of a, a head scratching one. Um, it's not that I don't think his talent is great. Um, I think he's kind of a charged up Vance McDonald, if you will. Baby Gronk's probably a bit too far. Um, but when I look at him, you know, I, I like the guy, probably a little bit of a reach. Um, I, I do know Steelers fans aren't crazy about Eric Ebron, rightfully so. Uh, Vance McDonald retires, so I, I get it. Um, I would have liked a Creed Humphreys here, um, but you know what? You know, again, Steelers probably know what they're doing a little bit better than me. Um, I just, you know, I, I would have liked to see them shore up that offensive line. You know, in the third round, they did end up getting Kendrick Green, guard from Illinois, who's probably going to play center or almost like a BJ Fenny when he was kind of a center and guard, um, which brings versatility, which we know Pittsburgh loves. And then in the fourth round, you know, they get Dan Moore and Buddy Johnson. Um, I feel like those are depth guys more than anything. Buddy Johnson could be a, eventually a Vince Williams replacement. Uh, he's not going to cover too well in the passing game, but I think he can be a special team ace. And uh, I, I think he can clog up that run. Um, but overall, you know, I, I think it's an, an interesting draft for Pittsburgh. And when I look at all the teams in AFC North, as far as this draft goes, I don't think there was anybody that was like, a, you know, a, a horrible draft by, by any means. Um, I said Cincinnati was my loser because I had to pick a loser. Um, but as far as that goes, I just think they should have short up the offensive line a little bit more. But uh, again, we'll see. Maybe they get, you know, people during cut time and they pick up another guard or tackle. Uh, that's to be seen. So we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear. But I think, you know, all four teams in the AFC North did well. And uh, I can't wait to see what happens this coming season. And if you guys like the episode, make sure you click like and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.